Happy Sabbath, everyone, and thank you so very much for joining us. Today's study is going to be based on the book of Haggai, chapter 2, and we're going to look at a few things there. But before that, I'd like to go ahead and continue with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for being good. I want to ask at this time that your Holy Spirit speak to us, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask this request. Amen. So as mentioned, we're going to the book of Haggai, chapter 2. I want to mention a few things from chapter 1, but let me share a little bit of the summary of what we will talk about. So it may be that you're, or you and I, it may be that we are at a time of loss at this time, right now. What do I mean? Well, there's a loss of supplies in the stores. You know, some things are hard to find. It's not what it used to be. Things used to be better where they were easily accessible and ready to, to, for purchase, right? And we see that that is not so much the case now. Unfortunately, jobs also may at some places be in a decline. The stock market is not what it used to be. There are things that are simply changing. This is a time of loss for many people. We'll see if, if in the Bible, if in the story of Haggai, we see a similar situation or events going on. We may miss the things, the way that things used to be. This may be true of us precisely today. It may be true for you watching at this moment. We will talk about encouragement, being strong and being encouraged by the word of the Lord. Um, economy was one of the things I'd like to talk about. I will highlight that while things may be plummeting in some um, areas, that we remember that the gold and silver belongs to the Lord. I'd like to also talk about God being able to provide. So while he's providing uh, different needs, I want to remind us to work for the Lord. Now that may take different forms, that may look different ways, but please work for the Lord. God is with us, he has given us his spirit, and God will in some future shape the world. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And also people desiring Jesus. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. The glory of the Lord will fill the, fill the earth. Do you believe it? And finally, we will mention as a 12th point um, that God can bring us peace. Do you need peace today? I know that many of us do. So let's go to the book of ha um, Haggai. We're in chapter 2, but I'd like to go ahead and read the script from the scripture reading again, which comes, it repeats more than once, but verse 7, Haggai chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Now, why is this text standing out to me for the time then and the time now? Well, check this out. The time then, when these words were pronounced, and by the way, this is at least the second time that the prophet says those words um, by verse 7. Um, people were tending to their own needs before tending to the work of the Lord. Uh, that may sound familiar because they were very busy. Or have you been busy lately? And it's interesting that when we are busy, we can't make time for everything. Can you make time for everything when you're busy? It's tough, right? So the thing is that this was the result. The house of the Lord needed to be worked on, but people were saying, no, this is not the time for that. And they were tending to other things, their own houses, just other things were on their priority list. And you know, in today's world, that may be very true of us today. It may be true even in your life. And so I think that this is important. So I'm going to go ahead and now, with that context, read chapter 2, and I will read until verse 9. So Haggai chapter 2, verse 1, until verse 9. And the Bible says, In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the sons of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is that among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do ye see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison, comparison of it as nothing? Yet now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word 
that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rewind and cover some of those things again. So let's talk about the people. The people in the day of Haggai. Who were they? Well, they were a people who had lost everything. Some years before, some generations before, earlier, um, they had been taken captive. They, were not, they did not have what they were used to. They were taken to a different place. They had lost everything. Some people today are worried about losing things. Jobs, classes. Um, there are people who are worried, much the same way where these people could have been worried. The economy changed, by the way. They didn't have their... Um, their Israelite economy, they had to go to Babylon. It was a whole new economy that they had to adjust to. These are difficult times and some of us find ourselves adjusting differently. Maybe not a different source of, uh, of, uh, of money, but yet perhaps some, some financial decisions have to be made differently at this time. They had to live elsewhere. And as mentioned earlier, things were not what they used to be for these people. There was an adjustment. I'd like to talk about the author, Haggai. I found this. It's a proper noun designating Haggai, a prophet who prophesied during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. This is around 520 before Christ, encouraging the people and leaders to rebuild the temple, the house of God. His name means festive or festival. Interesting name, right? It was not a time of festivities. It was a time of struggle, yet comes this prophet, and his name means festive. Very interesting. He warned the people to do the Lord's work and not put their own well-beings and economic prosperity ahead of that. And this is found in Haggai chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Um, Post-exilic Israelites had become an unholy, defiled people. This is later in the bottom verses 10 through 14 of chapter 2. And Haggai still gave them an encouraging message as well. So that is our author. He did three things. Prophesied. He encouraged and he warned the people. Very interesting for those times. Now, here are some details as to when the vision came. We read this earlier on, and it was on the 21st day of the seventh month. That may not sound very familiar, but to the people back then, it should have. Here is why. The date of the vision, the 21st day of Tishri, is significant, and the vision is communicated by Yahweh on that very day because of its significance. It marked the seventh day of the Feast of Sukkot, or Tabernacle. Exactly 440 years after Solomon had completed and dedicated the first temple. This is found in 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 38, and also chapter 8, verse 2. Also, the Feast of Sukkot was the time of the covenantal renewal, when the people of Israel recommitted themselves to fulfill the terms of their special relationship with their God. The disheartened people need, need to remember that God, that the God who has called them, who has called them into covenant, can and will crown their devoted efforts with success. He had a calling on them to rebuild his house, and God did promise to be with them. Um, the situation was less than desirable. Looking at chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, which we already um, uh, read, it was less than desirable, but there's a few very nice things that we can find there. Uh, for example, um, back in that time, especially in other religions, um, a deity filling uh, the place was important to them. And so 
it was also marked, you know, how worthy the deity, how worthy the situation was. The more luxurious it was, and the more worthy it was of them dwelling there, the deity dwelling there. And the former temple was a lot more glorious than the one that they were trying to build now. They had laid the foundation, and it just wasn't what it used to be. But you know what? Even though things weren't like they used to be before, God promised he would be with them, and he promised that his presence would be there. And you know, in our situation today, God's promise to be with us is enough. It, he, just the same way he encouraged them to work, and that he would bless their efforts, he can bless yours as well. Uh, verse 4, this is very interesting. Take courage, uh, or well, be strong is the word that is used. It comes from the Hebrew as hazak. And that is in the imperative um, every time to my understanding. And this is significant. You know, the same verb is found when, take, uh, when be strong was mentioned to Joshua. Now, why is this significant? This is exciting because Joshua was the successor to Moses. And in the time of Moses, while many were complaining, they knew, though, that there was stability. Moses was a proven leader. And things went as well as they could while he was there. And the time would come where he would no longer be the leader. Joshua would now come in. And he, I'm sure that everybody is now in um, something of a tension. Will things be as they used to be? Will they be as good as they used to be? Or as positive, as certain as they used to be? Or will we now have uh, times of changing a new leadership? Will it be more difficult? Joshua himself might have been nervous and fearful because he had large shoes to fill, right? And yet the same word in the imperative is said to him, which is be strong or take courage, in other words. And this is very important because he might have felt inadequate. inadequate. Today, maybe some of us have had hours cut back. We may feel inadequate with big situations to, to fill. Maybe we can't produce as much as we were able to because of the situations going on at the time. Uh, but the message is to take courage and to work for the Lord because He is with us. Joshua was to go forward. These people here in our story are supposed to work. They're supposed to continue going. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that we you know, go to places um, that would put us at risk. If our judge had caught that, uh, take measures, precautions, please. But we can work for the Lord in other ways. We can use the technology around us as we are doing at this time. We can work for the Lord, safely use the resources that are available to you, and God will bless. Uh, in the future, looking at verse 7 now, uh, God is going to do something. It says, And I will shake the nations, and the desire of nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. So I want to go ahead and um, look at a few things. This is in the future, right? He's going to shake things up. And you know, um, there are other prophets who had a glimpse of the future. And when God shakes things up, he sure does. In, in Jeremiah chapter 4, we see that there is something of a, situ uh, a situation similar, similar where it has the word um, either quaking or shaking. And the earth is desolate. And Jeremiah is looking at things that remind us of Genesis chapter 1. Dark, formless, and void. And we saw that God, uh, well, we saw that things are going to be happening in the future. Uh, but that is not a reason to fear. Jeremiah was not discouraged. Uh, and neither should we. Uh, we know that as we study things out in their context, we can have courage and we can move forward. So I want to go ahead and read that from Jeremiah. It's chapter 4, verse 23, and a few verses later until verse 26. It says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by His fierce anger. We know that God will shake things up, but this second coming is what we are looking for. Those who are in Christ have nothing to fear. They will be shielded. They will be protected. They will see this through. Now, 
I'd like to go ahead and make a little bit of a comparison of first time and second time because in our narrative, when they look at the temple, they were sad. It just, the blueprint, the, the foundation isn't what it, as glorious as, as it once was. And I'm sure that a lot of them were sad to the point where the Bible even tells us that some of them were crying. Now, some of us today may not have a situation as good as previously some weeks ago. But I want to go ahead and compare some first times versus second times in the Bible. You see, the first time, this temple was magnificent. And, and the second time, not so much. Some people were crying. But yet, the glory of the second one would be greater than the first one. Why? Because Jesus himself would walk in this second temple. And that made it greater. Even if it did not appear so to the sight, the presence of God made it greater. The presence of God can make your situation better today. The temple was now more humble. Now, why do I say this? Because in the first coming of Jesus, that was a much more humble situation. People expected him to be a conqueror, liberating them from the Roman oppression. But that's not what happened. Jesus came humbly. And the second time is going to be a little bit different because he's coming with absolute great power Evidence of this is in 2 Peter 3, 10 and verse 12, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, Matthew 24, verse 27, and I could list a whole lot more. The second will be greater than the first. The second temple was filled with the glory of God, and that's what made it greater. And according to Revelation chapter 18, verse 1, the entire world will be filled with the glory of God according to his word. Yes, the second will be better than the first. So what does that mean? If Christ, if God is in your life, the future will be better than your past. But that is conditional, friends. The difference is Christ. It's imperative. It is absolutely um, necessary. So here is a summary one more time according to the things which we have read and shared today. One, we may be at a time of loss. Yes. The local stores may not have all the supplies that they once had. They may, their presence, you know, their, their facilities may not be as glorious, so to speak, as they once were, even some days ago. It's true. It may be that we miss the way things used to be, just like this group here, missing the way that the temple used to be. Yes, it's true. And yet, according to what we have read, like Joshua, like the people here, take courage. Be strong. The Lord is with you. Point number four was the gold and the silver belongs to God. If we are suffering because of the economy, put it in prayer. I, I don't know what the answer will be exactly, but God can provide it. That much I do know. Point number six. Work for the Lord. They had an expectation here. At first, consider your ways because... They were using, spending their energies in, in their own lives, their own priorities. They were all about self, while the temple of God, the house of God, was neglected. Friends, we're busy. Have you been busy before? And as mentioned earlier, when we are busy, sometimes we forget to make time for God. But I, I suspect that currently, we have a lot, more front, a lot more free time than we used to. Would you agree with that? And if, even if that is not true, this is a good time to reconsider how we are using our time and dedicate more of it to the Lord. And now, point number six was work for the Lord. We may not be able to go out as we used to for the time being because of this pandemic, but we have social media and we have technology. Use this to share the word of the Lord. Use this to give others hope. Please work for the Lord. The Bible here says that God is with us, and that came from verse four in the letter part. It says, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. God was with them. He can be with us. Also in verse 5, he makes a specific statement, which is the Holy Spirit being present to help them. Even in the book of Haggai, the Holy Spirit was helping them, and he can help you and I today. That was point number 8. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. Point number 9, God is at times shaking the world, and he will. We saw this. It said it very specifically in verse 7, and I will shake the nations, 
And we also saw that Jeremiah and there are other prophets where they got a glimpse into the future where, yes, things will be shaken. But if God is with us, be encouraged. See, the other part of verse 7 was, and the desire of all nations will come. The desire of all nations. That is the Savior, the one who can forgive their sins, yours and mine. Do you desire Jesus Christ? Um, he, is, he came this first time, and I guarantee you, because the Bible promises that he will come again. The desire of all nations, the desire of ages will come again. Is that what you desire, though? Think about that. Reflect on that. Uh, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And in the future, according to Revelation 18, verse 1, the glory of the Lord, before he comes back, will again fill not just a building, but the earth, says the word of the Lord. And finally, according to the last verse we read in verse 9, and in this place will I give peace, say the Lord of hosts. God can give us peace. That's, that's what he does. If that is your desire, friends, I want to appeal to you. If you desire to have peace, I, I want to appeal to you that you decide, again, or for the first time, to accept the desire of nations into your heart. Make time for him. Will you make time for him today? Will you work for the Lord today? If that is, if that is your desire, I'm going to go ahead and have a word of prayer at this time. God knows your heart. And I'm going to pray that he encourage you um, to do and strengthen you to do precisely that. And to bring you peace. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for today, for the resources we have available. I want to ask that you be with us, Father. These are difficult times and a great many worldwide are affected. But this is not the first time, Father. Your people have gone through difficult situations before and you've given us your word to show us how you've come through for us, for them in the past and how you can come through for us now. Lord, give us your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that promise that we may work and share the everlasting gospel with others. Lord, use us to do precisely that. While we may have certain methods um, not available to us at this present time, we have others. I want to ask that you use our creativity and that you use those things that are before us that we may still work for you, Lord. Bless our efforts, forgive us of our sins, and Lord, while times are tough and not what they used to be, we thank you for a better future, and in the time being, Lord, grant us peace. Bless everyone watching and their families as well, for I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.